Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at the Axia 2 LED light module found in many, many Schrader street lamps and other manufacturer street lamps. So the claim is by the anti 5G crowd, anti vaxxers, etc., etc., that this light module is a laser and is toxic to the environment, namely plant life, insects, birds. Okay, so what, or should I say, the environment that I created was a controlled environment and our environment under test. So both samples were grown on the windowsill in September in sunlight in a propagator. Once germinated, I separated these samples into our control and our sample under test. The sample under test went into a grow tent. Uh, the grow tent had additional lighting. This lighting was in the red spectrum and the blue spectrum, giving additional blue light to the LED uh, street lamp module. And well, let's get on with the video. The results speak for themselves. Alrighty. That's why the lights are on all the time. But here's the other part of a weapon. I'm going to show you in here. These are bare elements. These are focused lenses. All right, they're focused lenses. See the small cables? Don't need a lot of power. Not like the delivery system for the weapon, right? For the antenna, it's a weapon. These are very small cables because these do not need a lot of power. They don't need anything near 450 volts or a 3,300 watt relay. Anybody that says that is either a liar, a fool, or just indoctrinated to the point where really they're pretty useless. These are bare elements. There is no protection. There's no diffuser. These are illegal. These are a category two optical radiation emission system. They're lenses, so what they do, that creates a focus point. These are basically lasers. So that bank of lasers there, in the 450, 460 nanometers, these are phosphor coated, and that phosphor wears off over time. So these become more toxic. They become more toxic, and they will kill. Yeah, so this was um, when I first put them in the propagator. They just started to come through. The ones nearest at the moment are uh, flowering more than the ones at the rear. This is a few more days in to the propagation. Going quite well. So Tom's at the back, took a bit longer than the basil. Uh, this is a few weeks in now. It's a death ray there. So I've added additional light for additional uh, red spectrum as well. And it also, there's more blue spectrum from them as well, so. Yeah, bit of a wonky death ray. Yeah, so really strong, looking pretty good. Now here, after I think about three weeks, maybe four is our control. Our control and our grown ones. This is a bit further back. See, looking really strong. Uh, this is when I added the SI1000 unit as well. So these are being bathed not only in the light spectrum from the Axia 2 light module, but also now um, from the WiMAC module inside that plastic housing. All right, a little update on our death ray, <laughs> Jesus, our death ray uh, toms. It's looking like the peat system, I'm just going to have to use the basil, which is you know, we're ready for a while. It starts flowering beautifully, actually. It's a shame I've not got more to pollinate, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so our toms, um, yeah, they're kind of just like growing into the death ray. <laughs> they just all concentrate on it. So, I mean, so that's clearly... The, you know, it's enough to say that bullshit, but um, yeah, 
they've just they've just grown too big. I've tried putting red light onto them. Uh, they are producing fruit, but it's not nowhere near yet. The leaves are starting to fall off the flower, and the the buds are starting to form. But by the time they're anywhere near anything, um, probably be growing out the top of the tents. <laughs> Right, so the dough is done. It's got to prove it. Um, yeah, so a bit of a mess, but not the biggest mess I've ever made, to be fair. That's pretty good. So, nice dough. We get that to prove, and then I'm going to get to work on my tomato sauce. Now, if anybody was wondering, it was. Hang on. It was seven grams of yeast and five hundred grams of bread flour. Probably thinking, wow, that's a lot for a pizza. Well, um, I'm going to freeze some of this dough for to use at another time. Um, yeah, so cool. Right then, on with the sauce. Right then, it's time to make our sauce. The Death Ray Basil, which is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> looking huge. Right, then, so I'm going to crack on with the sauce and I will probably give it an update as we go. Right, so just added the garlic and the, well, I added the celery, then the garlic steaming up there. So just added the garlic and the celery. Um, cool. Once in, shots on. Just roughly diced the basil. And it smells absolutely amazing. Right then, back to the first prep of the sauce. Yummy. So I'm just gonna dice up some of uh, these grilled peppers coming in olive oil. Nice. And uh, add that with the basil. Uh, yeah, it's going good. Back to the sauce. Right, so the sauce is just simmering away nice. So what you want to do really um, is just reduce this down over as long as you want. The longer the better, because more of that flavour is going to come out. You're probably asking, well, man, what's with the peppers and the celery? Well, that's in the absence of sugar. So I don't put sugar in my pizza sauce or my pasta sauce, which does make it yummy. Um, but effectively, it's obviously sugar. And I'm not a big fan of sugar, other than in coffee. So, yeah, just uh, crack on. But that's uh, just a little tip there with the peppers and the celery just add the sweetness um if you're going oh what celery in pizza sauce well if you like tomato ketchup then i'm sorry you've consumed celery unbeknownst to you cool all right i'll check back when things are getting a bit better so as a go that generally what i do is just add a good bit of tomato puree just a taste it's a bit early in the day yet to be doing that but as it progresses on, I'll just add a bit, yeah, I just find it just gives it a bit more depth. Um, and from the tin tons, it just takes a lot of the bitterness away. Um, and adds, again, more sweetness. So, cool. So another little niche thing I like to do is just put a bit of a peri-peri seasoning in. Uh, not too much, but just to give it a little bit of heat, a little bit of a kick. But not like what you would overpower a, a child, but just, just enough so it's there. Mm. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just blend it, make a nice smooth sauce. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a bit too chunky and nobody likes chunks of garlic. Obviously all the time, even while I'm doing this and after this, I'm going to keep reducing it down so it's nice and thick, otherwise you're going to have a soggy bottom, and nobody likes a soggy bottom. Mm. 
Right, so sauce has thickened up nicely. Just take a look at that. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, what you can also do, so if you look at the length of time it takes to fall off, that's just about right. Looks watery, but it will set as it cools, and obviously we want it to cool before we put it on the pizza. Another way of doing it, if you get it all nice and... Uh, flat and just dab it in pull it up you see them ridges that have formed and they're pulling up around a centimeter that is perfect so it's off the heat now put it to one side to cool this will get thicker and thicker as it gets colder and colder and uh yeah when we're ready when um, our dough is proved we will make some pizzas well death ray pizzas right so uh, Jeffrey tomato and basil sauce. Sadly without the tomatoes because as you'll see in the video, or may have already seen depending on how I did this, um, they just grew too big and actually grew into the Defray or the Axia 2 LED light module from the Schrader system. Yeah, so, but if you look at this sauce, sheet, that is what you want, as I said before, about thickening up as it cools. It's just lovely, and I do love loads of tomato base on my pizza. Right, so the next time you see this, it will be cooked and being consumed. Right, so um, it's risen beautifully. I've already started to make the pizza. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to do some uh, cheese and garlic dough balls as well to go on the side of that with a salad. So yeah, happy days. Right, so we're uh, doing our uh, garlic dough balls, put a bit of garlic powder in, a nice uh, chunk of cheddar and some grated mozzarella. What else going to do really is just fold these over into themselves. Like so, just pinch them tight. What you can do then is just, just get a bit of flour on your hand and just knead that sealed. And then once we've done this, we're going to finish our pizza and then eventually our salad. And hopefully, in about 25 minutes' of time, it will be tasty goodness. So, the finished article, the Defray pizza with the Defray basil, looks nice, we've got a pepperoni, I suppose you call it supreme, lots of pepperoni, uh, we've got an olive, onion and anchovy for you fish lovers, and obviously our garlic dough balls, which come out really well, oh I can hear that cheese, right so uh, Proof is in the tasting, and for the washing down, we have this nice Rioja Grand Reserve, six pound um, at the moment at m &S. That's not too bad. It's uh, 2015 as well. Good year. Excellent. to the glass as well, it's a sign of a nice full-bodied Rioja. Mm. Nice, so uh, this is Bear digging and uh, you can tell me what you think. Mm. Bit of a good cheese pull there. Eh? It goes, yeah. Mm. Mm. Mm, nice. That really good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Cheesy. Very nice. Mmm. Some um, are better than others because obviously uh, they 
It's not a lot of thirst. You can. Mm. Well, let's Still good though. Mm. So I'm going to start with a slice of pepperoni. Mm, this one. That should be nice. Mmm. 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 Good. Mmm. Real good. Mm, like a really good body to this. Mm, nice and springy. That was nice and the sauce is really good. Mmm. Um, more to the point, can you taste the death ray basil? <laughs> I can't taste the death ray basil. Mm, there you go. Well, to be fair, when I was, when I was cutting it, um, it was the smell coming off it was amazing. Mm. And you, you can't get it that fresh, even from the shops. You're getting a little hydroponically grown mm. um, efforts they do. And it's in its own little soil pot and whatever, and put it in the window. So even then, then, because of the hydroponic way they're grown, um, they just don't have that flavour. Mm, it's got a real sort of kick to it, hasn't it? Mm. Hopefully it's not a uh, full of nanobots or some bullshit. <laughs> uh, wake up in the middle of the night, like climbing up the walls and stuff. Let you know if I live till tomorrow. Mm, please do. <laughs> um, wake up and you're not there, I know something's, something's awry. Something's gone wrong. Yeah. Mm, that's actually a really good quality wine. Nice.